going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and share all these videos guys. I wanna share my 19 plus years of experience with the future generation of soft soldiers, all right? Guys, today I'm gonna be talking about how I fell phase one of the Special Forces Qualification Course, all right? All the experiences that I share with you guys, I share because I hope you guys are able to learn from them and hopefully that'll keep you from making the same mistakes that I've made so you can breeze through the Q course if you guys are fortunate enough to make it to that point. Like I stated before guys, I attended selection in 2008. I later on PCS to Fort Bragg and I started the Q course November of 2008. Back then guys, the Q course was laid out a little bit different, all right? Phase one was small unit tactics or SUT. That was approximately three months long. Phase two was SEER school. Phase three was MOS. Phase four was Robin Sage. And then phase five was language school. And then we graduated and got our beret after language school. So my phase one class started guys in November of 2008, all right? We started off with all classroom instructions and then after the classes, we would go behind the barracks in the woods and then we would conduct practical exercises, right? So let's say we got a class on Battle Drill 1 Alpha. We would sit through all the PowerPoint slides and then we would get broken down into our separate squads. We would go behind the barracks with our instructors and then we would run through that you know, battle drill over and over until everybody understood what was taking place within that battle drill itself, right? So I was a soft MOS guy. I was a 12 Bravo prior to going to selection and I've never done anything like that prior to going. So it took me a while to understand the different concepts within, you know, the battle drills, the ambushes and the raids, all right? Slowly but surely, I started to learn everything that I needed to learn and I got real comfortable within, you know, uh, three weeks of being out at phase one or small unit tactics. Well, I know all you guys are thinking, well, Jay, if you were doing so well in phase one and you were getting all the different concepts and you were understanding how to perform all these different, you know, battle drills, the raids and the ambushes, then how did you fail, all right? Let's talk about it, guys. So halfway through the three month course, my company commander at the time came in and got with a cadre and they requested to uh, speak to me directly. And for those of you guys that's been to any type of military schools, you know, as a student, you don't want any additional attention brought to you, right? You just wanna be the gray man. And whenever they call on you, you step in the spotlight and you do work, right? So, especially in the Q course, like you don't want that type of attention, right? So when my commander came in and requested to speak to me, you know, as a student, like my mind's going 100 miles an hour trying to figure out exactly what's going on. So right. I went and I sat down and I spoke with the commander, right? So what was going on was when I left my old unit, I was stationed on Fort Riley, Kansas. When I left that duty station, there was a investigation going on within my platoon that I was in charge of, right? And CID needed to speak with me for whatever reason. Not that I'm saying it was planned, but they waited for the worst time to request a sit down with me, right? And when CID comes calling guys, they don't care who you are, they don't care what you got going on, you need to go speak with them, right? So my commander pulled me out of training and they brought me back to Bragg proper where I had to go sit down and speak with the CID agent. So I was there for longer than the allotted time that I was allowed to miss, all right? Most of you guys out there that's been to any military school knows you're only allowed to miss eight hours. Anything past that, you're automatically removed from the course that you're in. So due to missing those eight hours, guys, I wasn't able to go back into the SUT class that I started with. I had to wait an additional three months just to start phase one all over again, right? I didn't start phase one again, guys, until February of 2009. During that three months that I was waiting for the next class to start, several other guys from that SUT class that I had just left also got recycled, right? Some of them were mostly due to personal reason. Some guys had marital problems. Others had financial issues. This poor guy, his spouse just up and left and left his kids in the house and he had to get pulled out of training to go be with his kid. Guys, I'm sharing all this information with you because I want you to get all your affairs in order, all right? Whenever you step off to start that journey, you need to be there mentally, 
and physically, all right? You can't have any sort of distraction, guys, while you're going through selection or the qualification course, all right? You need to make sure all your finances are in order. You need to make sure you don't have any legal actions pending, all right? Doing these stuff, guys, will allow you that peace of mind that you need so you can focus on the task at hand, all right? Guys, I hope this information was helpful. If any of you guys have experienced something similar, please post it on the comments below and share with the community so they can see that it's not just me that went through this and that it happens to the best of us, all right? I appreciate you guys watching, and until the next video, take care of yourself.